right, everybody, it's live in the D in the green room. Happy Wednesday. From the green room to the press room, uh, your coffee cup is from there. <laughs> yeah. That's the restaurant that's across the street from the station that's on right. Lafayette. I want to say, I was telling you earlier, do not sleep on the press room's chicken sandwich. They you have a, tell me that. They have an outlet there called Roost, as in rooster, or yeah. as in, you know, chicken roost. If Jason said the sandwich is good, then it's likely very good. So just looking at your cup, I'm like, grr, 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 grr. Good thing, we can get you some lunch. All right, but speaking of good foods, good fun, we had John Witz on talking about the Taco and Tequila Festival that's coming up. This is something I feel like would be right up your alley. Anything that has tacos and tequila in the title is right up it's my right alley. right up his alley. All right, well, check this out. John Witz puts on the best events in Metro Detroit, and I think this is another one that you're not going to want to miss. Well, one of the biggest things about the summer are summer festivals, and there are a bunch of them that you can look forward to this year, including a new one where you can get your fill of tacos. And joining us to talk about this event is John Witz, the event producer of some of the biggest things happening this summer. Great to have you in studio, oh, John. It's so good to be here, Tati. <laughs> it's been a while. It so. feels, yeah, it does. It feels like it's been forever, in fact. But let's start with the newest event happening over the 4th of July weekend in Royal Oak, the Taco Fest. Tell us about it. Well, it's the Royal Oak Taco Fest, uh, 40 amazing taco restaurants. We have Vegan Nova here and Galindo's, two award winners, which we can talk about in a second, but mm -hmm. three music stages. Uh, uh, we have uh, kind of a Mexican themed wrestling. We have a Chihuahua parade. We have hot pepper eating contests, uh, a nice family area as well. And Very we have nice. so much tequila, 40 different types of tequilas will be oh, there, frozen down. margaritas. <laughs> I said, you know, we got some Hornitos tequila here, some Reposado, some Blanca. I got some, uh, we'll do some shots to okay. toast at the Look end, Jason, if we something. call you in. Yes, so, we'll... so why tacos? Let's talk about that. Well, tacos certainly is one of the most popular, you know, foods around right now. Not that tequila is also one of the fastest rising, most popular beverages of choice right. for the summer. So, you know, so the tacos, you know, Vegan Nog, I, I can mention. Yeah, let's I, get into these. We're starting to the here. best of the Detroit Harvest Fest last year. Um, they have a uh, steak taco which is made with seitan they use vegan queso in there they have a barbacoa taco with jackfruit and that's all this over all here all of this is the vegan side amazing. obviously corn and mm -hmm. some nachos uh, they have a uh, vegan chorizo so they they rock the house and they're they're incredible and then we also have the cinco de mayo best of detroit winner which is galindo's you see they're known for tortas and mm -hmm. again tacos they have their uh, um uh asada fries over there and quesadillas and we're so blessed to have them and many more like senior taco peace love taco 40 taco trucks and 40 types of tequila so well. it is going down because this is 40 taco trucks and tequila yes. so you know Tequila is a super popular, it goes perfectly with tacos, but do you mind if we look ahead a little bit and talk uh, in sure. the summer, talk about Arts, Beats and Eats? What's on tap? Uh, well, uh, it's it's our 25th anniversary, so we're going to have a great music lineup coming uh, coming soon. Some of the best artists in the in the country, also yeah. an amazing food lineup, family activities. Prior to that, we have Rock and Rides in Royal Oak. Um, July uh, 16 through 19, all, uh, major family activities and also the rock side with DJs and, and bands. And then we close things off as we get into the fall with the Detroit Harvest Fest. Nice. And that's all about the Riverfront Conservancy and the great work they do on the DeQuinder Cut, 60 food trucks, uh, music stages, fun for the kids, pumpkin decorating, trick or treating. So we have the summer packed. Uh, I love stuff. it because this is our time, people. It's gonna be 80 degrees today. This is when we get out <laughs> Start getting in the yes. mood, exactly, Tati, We're for up sure. We're and having a good time. All right, Jason, come on. You know you want to come in. A plata from Hornitos, or, or would you like the reposado? <laughs> this goes with palomas. This goes with margaritas. Choose, John. I'm going to give you the plata. <laughs> okay. And I. I I couldn't I, leave him out of the fun, right? We can't have tacos and tequila and I not like invite shirt, Jason all in. Oh, well, th thank you. Trying to have a little bit of fun. Very and then nice. I have a, a smaller a sipping potion, uh, a little, portion. A Elixir. Potion. Uh, I have a lime for you. I'm good. I'm You're good? OK. Well, let's cheers. Here's to great summer events. Great thank summer. you, Hornitos. And here we go. Yeah, and you cheers. Do, you, you, John Witt's events are awesome. Let oh, me just put that, that out is. there. I have such a good time at Arts, Beats, and Eats every single year. So I'm glad everything oh. is back and we're going to uh, come back and have fun. You're making me emotional just for being here and those are nice words so it's, it's true it's the thank truth you. it's the truth so john cheers. thank you for being with yes. us yeah, cheers look cheers. at this food vegan nova galindos thank you, you guys had to talk i thought i would just that's do... okay oh you you're, drink you're allowed, you're allowed. <laughs> if you want to know more about the royal oak taco fest oh, you can wow. go to the website 
RoyalOakTacoFest.com. Oh. So we go from uh, the fine food and bakery items to a little bit of a ham. <laughs> William Shatner. He was great. Coming to town for Comic Con, and as I've done so many times before, I got to have a five-minute satellite window with him, and as always, he was a delight. Yeah, I feel like you guys had a real connection. He is an iconic television and movie star, raconteur, man about town, author, spoken word jam artist, who has graced the screen since the 1950s. <laughs> There's a man on the wing of this plane, and it's not T.J. Hooker on the hood of his car, but it is William no, Shatner. Oh, it's me! It's me on the edge of a rocket. <laughs> the guy put a Tesla up on a rocket. You remember that? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, SpaceX. <laughs> So they were going to put me on the tip of that rocket. I just absolutely refused to be on the tip of that rocket. Hey, uh, can we look forward to a sequel to your spoken word poetry jam record anytime soon? Listen, my dear, you're missing a whole thing. There's an album out there now called Bill. Uh-oh. And uh, right now, uh, with a, a lovely music and lovely people accompany me, and I was invited to perform at the uh, Kennedy Center, which took place last Friday, and it was like a lightning success with a 60-piece orchestra behind me and me doing my thing, and it was fantastic. So yes, you not only can look forward, you can look backward. <laughs> You're always sharp as a tack. I've lost track of how many of these talkbacks that we've done. I think of you as being an old friend, but you've never even seen my face, I don't think. But no, you but will. You you will see my what face. With you. <laughs> you are. Are you happily married, or are you looking around? What are you a big gallivant around town? No, no, that's that's you're the guy around town. Now, William, you're coming to Metro Detroit this weekend for Motor City Comic Con. That would be my my best opportunity to see you face face to yeah, face for the first time. Know? Uh, so thank you for being with us. Uh, we have to start, of course, with your trip to space. It was not at the tip of the rocket, but it could have been. Um, do you ever imagine when you were back uh, filming Star Trek, the show and the movies, that, that you would one day actually go to the edge of space? Yes. No, absolutely not. It was the furthest thing from my mind. But as you were saying about being on the tip of the rocket, you know the, 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 the uh, performers who, uh, I think it's an orca, and they stand on the nose of the orca, and the orca leaps into the air, and the diver kind of takes off and goes, wouldn't it have been sensational if I was on the tip of the rock? <laughs> You're talking about the old SeaWorld show. I know exactly what you mean by that. <laughs> That's what should have happened. Uh, if I ever do it again, I'm going to be on the tip of the rocket and leap forward. You know, like an orca. My God, that takes me back. We're watching video of you uh, first being weightless and then come, you know, descending uh, with the shoot. Uh, you're coming to Comic Con this weekend. It's a chance for the fans to meet you. And of course, I've, I've, I feel like I brought this up every time that we've talked. But the famous Saturday Night Live skit, where you said something like, "Why don't you people have lives?" or "Why don't you people get lives?" and it sort of became this winking thing. It made you even more endeared to your fans. Uh, well, it did. It was, it was accepted with the same humor that it was meant, so I was uh, uh, delighted by that. Because there was some talk, you know, what will the how will the audience react? And I remember saying, I th I, they, they understand. You've done so much in your career. If there was a moment on a show or in a movie that you could relive again, would it be a T.J. Hooker uh, hood uh, slide, or would it be a dramatic turn on Star Trek, or? I don't know, you know, um, you know, what I did on Friday night with uh, stuff that I wrote with, with uh, Robert Cherno, the lyricist, and Dan Miller, the music, a 60-piece orchestra, and they were there, I was there in front of them for 45 minutes, and they stood and cheered and wouldn't let me off the stage. I took three, and this is in a concert hall, and they wouldn't let me off the stage, and we had to open the lights after three curtain calls, and they were standing and yelling and cheering. One of the great moments of my life, um, and, and it's going to be a, a television show and, and hopefully an album. That was perhaps, certainly of, of late, the most wonderful moment uh, I can think of. I, I was so tuned in. It was a perfect night. I, I worked very hard on the words and, and uh, overcoming some of the problems that we had on Friday night. It was just one of those electric nights, and it was incredible. So yes, I, if I were going to point at something uh, that I can remember, 
Uh, <laughs> it was on Friday night. <laughs> so real quick, um, about 30 seconds left in our satellite interview here. Uh, were you and Adam West uh, two actors with uh, vocal tendencies, shall we say. Were you aware of each other around 66 that you were both kind of hamming it up on screen? Well, uh, we were in a movie. Uh, we, we did something together. Uh, no, I mean, I, I don't know what Adam was doing. I was trying to uh, make music, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> but I've learned, I've learned more about how to do what I do uh, better every time I do it. So... It looked like it was very successful on Friday. Excellent. So, uh, William Shatner, I don't know, this has been so many times that I've had to say goodbye, and every time I say I wish we had more time, but it's always a pleasure to speak with you, my friend. You can see William Shatner and several other stars this weekend at Motor City Comic Con at Suburban Collection Show Place in Novi. It runs, the show runs, Friday through Sunday. So he mentioned that uh, he and TV's Batman, Adam West, had done a movie together. You know they're both ham actors, mm -hmm. right? So I looked it up on YouTube, and you can find the movie. It's Alexander the Great from 1963, and they're both in the credits, so I can't wait to watch it. Yeah, YouTube, baby. Making dreams come alive. Good old Captain Kirk. All right, well, if you didn't need another reason to love Ann Arbor, we're going to introduce you to Exotic Bakery. So what I really like this, what Tamara said, is that it's not what you'll find in your normal Middle Eastern restaurant. These are all home recipes, like stuff that they cook at her house. So check them out when you're in Ann Arbor. I think you're going to be pleased. It looks amazing over here. It smells amazing as well. We'll get ready to experience some exotic dishes and desserts. What started as a family-owned business decades ago has grown into a spot that is rolling out salads, sandwiches, specialty cakes, and more in Ann Arbor. We want to welcome Tamara Al-Khatib. Al-Khatib, thank yes. you so much from Exotic Bakeries to the show. And this is exotic and delicious and looks so flavorful. Thank you. You're welcome. So you describe your menu as having a mix of Syrian and French style items. What do you mean by that? And what's the inspiration behind your flavors? You know, honestly, we serve a lot of regional favorites. Um, we try to give you what we make at home. So this is more home cooking, um, not necessarily the things that you would find in most Middle Eastern restaurants. Okay. Uh, my mom studied in France, so we do offer a variety of French pastries as well as Syrian desserts as well. Oh, well let's get to the sweets. Let's get right to the sweets. <laughs> so tell us about the different desserts. So let's start with the cakes. So this is a traditional French cake. It's called fruit chantilly. It has a light fruit uh, mix in, inside as well as um, fresh cream. Um, I don't use any preservatives or artificial flavors, so it is full and fresh, and it doesn't keep you heavy. Mm. This is a chocolate cake, so it's filled with fresh strawberries, chocolate ganache, and a chocolate buttercream. It seems really, really rich, but it's actually not too heavy. Very nice. Um, and then we have a variety of French tarts. This is These are more traditional tarts in France, as well as a blackberry mango mousse bar, which this one is vegan, by the way, wow. as well as my amaretto mousse bar, which is vegan as well um, and then we try to throw in some fun stuff for the kids like you know a peanut butter brownie here and there sure sure <laughs> gotta include them in the fun <laughs> so you're not just all about sweets you've got other dishes as well some of that are admiring before we actually yes. got on air so let's let's go through these these look amazing yes yeah, so these are again like I said these are all recipes from our family they've been used for generations um, this is tomato burrol. tomato burrol is actually cooked. I'm gonna try to tilt it just so, <laughs> so we can get a shot of this it's and not drop it. Wheat cooked in tomatoes, onions, garlic, and red pepper. Um, this is makmur. Makmur is made with um, fried eggplant, tomatoes, onions, garlic, mint, and it's all stewed for hours. Mm. This one right here is actually very, very regional. It's called Hara Asba. We call it Damascus lentil here. Um, it's a variety of lentils with um, caramelized onions, garlic, lemon, pomegranate, molasses, pita chips, and a little bit of fried onion, and our baby okra, which I actually get imported because it doesn't grow here. Wow. And um, it has cilantro as well as the pomegranate molasses in there. So we know everything is super well seasoned and flavorful because I can smell it and you can see it. <laughs> so you also have sandwiches. I do. So we have a variety of sandwiches. This is my Syrian burrito. This guy is very popular right here as well as uh, vegetarian favorites. The detox. It has spinach divine, beet baba ganoush and a variety of veggies. Hello. 
um, as well as our beef kefta sandwich, which is the frank. It has beef kefta, tabbouleh beladi, garlic sauce, and pickles. Now, what is this up here? That, that is red phenomenal. pepper kibbe. We actually oh. make it in our city like that. It has muhammad on top. So back home, we actually call it kibbe ptum, which translates to garlic with uh, kibbe. Okay. Uh, it's actually topped with muhammad, which is a base of walnuts. Ooh. Fresh red peppers, dried red peppers, lemon, pomegranate molasses. It's really tart, but it also has a sweetness. Very it's nice. Okay, now we're just about out of time, so let everyone know where you're located and how they can find you online. Yeah, we're on Plymouth Road in Ann Arbor, right off of North Campus for U of M. I am running the business all on my own, so oh, it's wow. a one-woman show. Um, so I appreciate patience from <laughs> everybody. Um, but yeah, and you guys can check us out on Facebook. Every week I rotate my menu, okay. as well as Instagram and our website, exoticbakeries.com. Very exciting. And then you wanna, you'll want you get some delicious and beautiful dishes just like this. Tamara, thank you so much thank for joining you. us. Everything is so beautiful. <laughs> thank you for having me. To learn more about the cool places and things happening in the Ann Arbor area, visit the website allaboutannarbor.com, which is made possible by these sponsors. Thanks for hanging out with us in the green room. With our special lamp. I love this lamp. It's very, it's very 1950s. It's very fancy. <laughs> very fancy. See ya!